For a look at that, James Nelson has a look at the life of this truly remarkable man. In one of Salt Lake City's humble neighborhoods, his story begins. Born in 1944, with America still at war, Larry Miller grew up quickly, with working class roots, love for his community, and a fascination with sports and automobiles. All of that was enough to forge a future and find plenty of blue sky ahead. When we got married, he worked at a place called American Auto Parts. Before that, he'd had several jobs. He'd worked as a hod carrier for a construction company, he'd worked at a bookbinding company, he'd worked at a gas station, um, done a lot of different things like that, but nothing that would make a living for a family. With a young family, high hopes, and a nasty fastball, Larry Miller found success in Denver as a world-class fast-pitch softball player and in the automobile parts industry. Soon he was back in Utah with that first dealership, and then another, and another. It was our position that we wanted to keep the jazz in Salt Lake City, and so we were determined to do whatever possible to make it successful within this market. The general feeling we had was <clears throat> that if we didn't come forward and buy the team, that it was not able to survive economically with $6 million worth of debt, that there was no way that anyone could ever buy a new franchise and bring it to Salt Lake for the $24 million. And that's what led to my comment that I made to my wife driving down the freeway the one night, that the Jazz can't leave Utah. The encore to selling cars successfully was buying a professional basketball team, and this automobile dealer bailed a team out. The rest is Utah Jazz history. We invite you all to use this arena to put it to work upon its completion so that it may truly fill the measure of its creation, that being to make the state of Utah and the city of Salt Lake an even better place to live and to work and to play. The new home for the Jazz was built in record time, but it took a tremendous toll on Larry Miller. Still, there were more challenges. Movie theaters, a baseball team, a sports car racetrack, and business. But his passion for education was paramount. And there's a phrase that I love that speaks directly to the value of education. And young people like Clem standing here today next to me. <clears throat> and it is, children, respectfully, children, young people, are the messengers we send to a time we'll never see. And so the rhetorical question I think that begs is what messages do we want them to carry? I think there are a lot of things that, that we can learn from him. Uh, not just the insignificance of a necktie, but uh, you know, I think there are things that, uh, that, here's a fellow that's from the people and he's never forgotten that and it's still part of him. His emotion, his passion, those types of things are, are, are very, very much part of being one of the folk. The pages turn quickly, his story filled with lifelong lessons for him and us about winning and losing, the changing landscape of a city and life, and for all to remember the infinite unity of teardrops. No spoiled TV actors, just certified technicians that respect your time.